Hello to viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Computer Wednesday, we're going to talk about ASUS ROG Ally. So let's dive deep into it. So what is this puppy? Well, this puppy is a direct answer to Steam Deck. Now, here's the deal. Steam Deck recreated something that already used to exist, meaning back in the days we used to have portable x86 Windows PC. Uh, but they recreated it. Of course, replaced the Windows with other things, but still running Windows game. That's why I'm calling Windows system. So the idea is this came to the market and it was surprisingly successful. How successful? 1.6 million, that is around 16 lakh unit are sold. More than that by the time this data was collected. So uh, what does that mean? That simply means this puppy is successful, meaning every Tom, Dick and Harry is looking into it. It's like, uh, I want that piece of that pie. So handheld x86 PC hardware meaning it's not a basically locked ecosystem like Nintendo Switch or something like that. It's like it's just a PC, x86 PC, meaning you can run Linux on it, run Windows on it, whatever heck you want to do with it. And Asus launched a competitor and the biggest advantage this puppy has, aside from uh, like, you know, relative performance, cost to performance ratio, is that this has modern SOC because when this puppy came out, this was a custom SOC. Basically, uh, this is more or less exactly how uh, Xbox is built, how PlayStation is built. They go to the manufacturers, like uh, let's say in both scenarios, AMD, and they'll talk to like, bro, we want this. This is this is our requirement. What can you do? So they will, both of them will work together, create a basically SOC, and then test it out, develop it, figure all things out, and then mass produce it. Valve did that. Now. That is awesome, but does come with a consequence. Meaning generally what you get is generally ancient. Why? Because again, it takes time. That procedure is super long. Compared to anything that is designed for normal mass production, that is like, you know, I'm gonna develop this, this is gonna be go through testing, and this is gonna be uh, sent to laptops or desktops. Uh, those things are much more streamlined pipeline and parallel pipeline. So it is always much more concurrent, much more up to date to buy hardware that is in those pipeline rather than custom built system. So. Because of the success of that, there was a demand for it. And AMD was one of those companies that was truly working their ass off in a GPU market for so long ago. Meaning Intel always had integrated GPU, awesome. But they never had the horsepower which AMD was bringing. Now then why the heck AMD was not popular? AMD was not popular simply because they did not have the CPU part that was good. That only changed recently when uh, after the release of Ryzen, specifically Ryzen 5000. So Asus takes the advantage that this puppy showed the world that uh, SOC of that caliber can do something serious and make some serious amount of money. AMD was like, we already have new things ready in the pipeline, ready to go. So this company is just like, okay, let's get married. So they enjoy the benefit of modern SOC with uh, the biggest hurdle with this puppy is that even though it does run Windows game, it does not run them natively. There is a compatibility layer of Wine, ProtonDB, Linux. So it's like there is an extra hassle to just getting a Windows game to run. Here, direct Windows 11. Don't worry about it, just Windows 11. There's nothing more about it. It's just like Windows 11 with modern SOC. That's the biggest advantage of this puppy. So this is ROG Ally. Now let's talk about the specification. And uh, you have to understand, this is Zen 4 compared to Zen 2. This is RDNA 3 compared to RDNA 2. And that's why I specified. The pipeline that is there for normal consumer products, they are far more up to date. So this chip will come to other laptops, notebooks and all that jazz. But right now, this is the first hardware that common public can buy. Again, not buy right now. It's still, it will take you till June or July before you actually have your hands on just buy. But uh, this is the first device public is aware of. And it has two SKUs, which I have no idea why, because they change the worst thing. Like uh, when you buy a Steam Deck, the SOC does not change, meaning the horsepower is always there. You can upgrade it. Let's say you are strapped for cash. You're like, okay, I'm going to buy the bare minimum and then I'm going to upgrade in the future with upgrading the memory. Here, you can't really do that simply because it has Zen 1 model that has 256 GB PCI 3.0 SSD and Zen 1 Extreme that has 512 GB PCI 4.0 SSD. So not only is like uh, SSD is going bigger in capacity, it's also getting faster in capacity. And that itself is more or less a similar jumping from uh, basically eMMC to SSD that uh, uh, you know Steam Deck does. However, this goes from hex core 12 threads to octa core 16 threads. That's a big ass deal. That means you are uh, sacrificing two cores and uh, four threads if you buy Z1. Not only you're getting slower uh, basically memory, you're also getting slower core. That's bad. So eight core 16, and everybody review that you're seeing, it's from eight core. So it does not mean that it. Z1 Extreme has more power. Every review you are seeing is of Zen 1 Extreme. So do not expect like, you know, oh, I will buy the Pro model. This is the Pro model. 
so even asus themselves are like their representative is like yeah i do not know why anybody will buy uh, you know the lower grade variant because again soc is compromised so that's a unwise investment so to say now the biggest difference between this and basically steam deck is steam deck is weird uh, resolution that is 800p this is pure shuddh full hd 1920 by 1080 no butter masala required it's simple elegant that is awesome on top of that it's 120 hertz that's really desirable on top of that it has free sync now free sync matters here the most simply because this is a mobile soc running on throttled power from a battery bank that is much smaller if it was built compared to let's say a laptop laptop will have like <clears throat> gg amounts of power this does not have that kind of space so the battery is a fundamentally limited battery so how much oomph it can deliver is limited so soc cannot just like you know spread its wing but what does that mean that simply means when you are running a game your minimum dips could drip so how do you solve that well free sync is here to help you for example if you have a gpu that is giving out 120 fps awesome your dis display that refreshes at 120 fps awesome everything is married everything is awesome but here's it divorce happens when you literally have a scenario where gpu is like stutters it's like instead of delivering frame every few milliseconds it takes 2 or 3 milliseconds extra now screen is stuck in a point where it's like uh, the display driver basically is like uh, re-render the old frame and you notice is that and the moment you notice it that freaks out like wait that was a jitter you do not like jitter if fps smoothly uh, synced with the display even though let's say it's running at 120 it dropped to 90 and gpu directly talked to the display and be like bro refresh slower we are not able to crunch frames you will not notice it your useful experience would be tangibly better if even if it was like you know going down so time zone of like 30 fps to 120 fps this zone any fluctuation this will compensate and you will have much more smoother experience even though you are playing even though it may be shuddering you will not notice it that's a really desirable thing not only you have range you also have adaptability that's a truly upgrade product then this puppy has 65 uh, watt power delivery and uh, 40 watt hour battery which is kind of odd 40 watt hour for this sort of powerful soc is a bit low bit low but it does allow you to recharge this puppy at 1.3 hour and if you are like wait a minute why the heck one more than one hour uh, lithium ion chemistry can withstand 1c 1c equals 1 hour so and you have 65 watt why can't you charge in 0 to 100 in 1 hour well problem is uh, first the charging is always done slowly to warm up the battery once the battery is warmed up then you could dump power and you keep dumping power until you reach that 80% fulfilled mark at that point it has starts to overheat at that point you will reduce your current same happens with all the fast charging in electric car you plug it in it will like okay let me warm up the cells once the cells warm up it's like diddy it's like super amount of uh, amps are dumped into like 250 kilowatts in like some tesla models but that will not be sustained same here 65 watt yeah that's awesome but it's not going to be sustained 65 watt hour continuously and on top of that that 65 watt hour is designed in laptop configuration where it's like it's going to run the soc and charge the battery so 1.3 hour charge charging time is kind of awesome But again, it's more for like so you have a much longer lifespan rather than they can force it. They can, there are many mobiles, the force phones that literally forces sub one hour charging, which you never want to do with lithium ion chemistry. It does not last very long. So those are the core aspects here. And do not buy the low end option, flat out because it compromises the SOC. Do not buy that. All the reviews that you are seeing, it will drop drastically the moment you go from hex, uh, basically octa core to hex core. So these are the specification of this puppy. So what about the performance? Well, uh, it has adequate cooling for the performance. Now that's the biggest thing because when you have something this tiny, there's a very serious issue with he overheating. Like uh, Intel laptops from Apple used to overheat simply because even though it was a laptop, they did not put so much effort in cooling, and TDP always used to you know bottleneck it themselves. Here there is no issue, and you may be like, why the heck it has two cooling fan? It's like 30 watt should be enough for one. It is, but what they did is this is another aspect. It's like. they are not just building a device for performance they are building a device for use so what are the issues that if you have something like this that you will face if you have single fan the fan has to run at much higher rpm feeling of that would be noisy so it's much more pleasant experience even though it cost a bit more uh, to have like two systems it's far more pleasant experience for the user where it's like instead of whoosh, it's like subtle everything is subtle so that's why they have two fan designs it's very subtle thing but it does show that somebody in their engineering team knew what they were doing they're like bro we get it that you want to reduce cost just put one that's awesome but here's the it will be noisy which is in steam deck case it is here distribute that it will be much more quiet and compare them in contrast is like whoa 
one is loud AF, this is like, I got this. So that's a really good thing. And because again, it has two system, it also has thermal overrun. What does that mean? That simply means you've connected by power and you can overdrive this puppy from, let's say, 25 watts of TDP to 35 watts of TDP. These fans still will be quiet because they're like, bro, we are overbuilt anyway. It's like, no problem. So how does this perform compared to Steam Deck? Well, uh, Steam Deck will bitch slap this if you are limited by power, meaning if you do not have extra power banks and you are like, okay, uh, I just, I'm on a plane, I do not have extra power banks and I want this puppy to last as long as possible. At that point in time, this will be lost basically against to Steam Deck because if you throttle the power down to let's say 10 watts, 5 watts or 15 watts, this will not be able to hold up. Like it does require a bit more oomph in order to actually fly. It's like a jumbo jet that does need a long runway. But if you provide that runway of 25 watts, that's the sweet spot. The moment this puppy touches 25 watts of TDB, then it's like nitrous gear and then it smokes. It flat out smokes Steam Deck. And uh, the moment you connect it, let's say you are a rich person, you have a power bank that actually supports power delivery and supports 65 watt. Uh, you plug this puppy in, it detects it's connected and you can trip to into 30 watt mode or you can manually put into 35 watt mode. At that point in time, this is a flat out gaming laptop from two few years ago. Flat out, not even a compromise, just flat out. And because of the overbuilt cooling, it won't even be super noisy. So it's really, really good at th uh, basically 35 watt, not at 25. 25, it's a really good system, but at 35, it's like, whoa, whoa kind of power. So what will you, can you expect if you're running it on battery? Basically like a handheld, what can you expect? You can expect 720p at mid settings and around 60 plus FPS. Now you're like, wait a minute, that does not sound that interesting. Well, it won't be. You are talking about uh, basically gaming PC that is this tiny, there will be compromise. There is a reason why my gaming PC is huge. So you have to understand, you have to accept that penalty. And uh, again, unless some developers develop games specifically for that SOC, uh, this will not be solved. All things considered, compared to Steam Deck, it's much better compared to uh, any other game, basically. Like even if you are looking at Steam, uh, Nintendo Switch, the visuals would be exponentially better, exponentially, not like, oh, little bit better visuals, no, 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 no. One is like, you know, crayon, another is water painting. So fundamentally much better visuals. So, but does come with a penalty. You do have to go to 720p and because the monitor is proper full HD, it's one pixel to four pixel, super easy to scale up and scale down. And because of the 60 FPS, it's more than 30 FPS, the free sync will kick in and it's gonna make love. So you will never notice shutter, even if the 1% dip drops to almost, let's say 40 FPS or even 30 FPS. But uh, some game can run at 120 FPS. Let that be very clear. It's not like every single game is th that ill-optimized. Many of the games that are like two, three years old and optimized well, it can easily run at 120 FPS at some tweaking of the setting, specifically like Counter-Strike or something like that. And it can do also basic video editing. This is why I specified. This is a x86 Windows 11 machine, meaning you can do everything on this that you can do on Windows 11 machine. Now, will it have the same horsepower as like a dedicated video editing? Hell no. Will it have same horsepower as like any competent laptop? Absolutely. Especially when plugged in. Once you have that 30 watt zone, it's like, bro, I got this 35. That's a bit extra, but like you have more than enough headroom. So what about the ecosystem? When you're talking about something like handheld, you are thinking about things that go around it. For example, it's like, why did Sony PlayStation Vita failed? Simply because the console was good, but ecosystem, meaning the games around it was gibberish. So consequence, poof. Now, why Nintendo is still surviving? They have some successful IPs and they are milking that puppy properly. Now here, we do not have to worry about that. Why? Because it has the daddy of all gaming, which we call Windows. Now I can get it, personally I can get it, if people already know Windows sucks and all that, yes dear. It does not matter. I worked as a 3D game artist, let me be very clear about this. Everything runs on Windows, flat out. And all the PlayStation you see, all the Xbox you see, all of them are developed in PC. And on top of that, most of them are literally becoming a PC, including DirectX, so flat out. And you can even notice that. Now it is God of War is on, available on PC. And uh, you know, Horizon uh, Zero Dawn is now available on PC. All that, again, there is no longer that exclusivity, only it's much quicker. You get it quickly. In PC, it does take time. So flat out. And in terms of how many old games are available, how many current games are available, how many small studio games are available, like I play Satisfactory. It's not an exclusive game. You can play it, but there is no, uh, what you call, direct comparison in any other console. So flat out Windows is daddy. Flat out. We do not discuss about it. Windows equals daddy. So ecosystem wise, let's not talk about that. 
Now, it also has no launcher limitation. Can you, in principle, install Epic Game Store on Windows Steam Deck? Absolutely. It's just that figure out how to do that, uh, basically, thing, Windows thing in Linux thing. That's the issue. They're not limiting. They're not blocking it. It's just that very frustrating to do. So people don't do it. Here, it's Windows. You can literally have Microsoft Store. You can have Epic Store. You can have Steam Store, whatever the hell you want, or randomly uh, you know, download EXE and install it. Uh, my developer's friend will love that because we, again, we have to <laughs> develop our own EXE and then used to play. So it's one of those things that you can, do not have to worry about. And then we come to the multiplayer. The biggest benefit here is that every anti-cheat software works. Why? Almost all anti-cheat software are written for Windows. So you do not have to worry about it. That's a, a very big hurdle, especially for multiplayer, especially for Steam Deck. Because it has so many extra layers of compatibility, it triggers a red alert in all anti-cheating software. So cheating software will flat out blockade the game. So that's a very big issue. Here, you do not have to worry about that. So flat out, install the game, run the game, don't think too much about it. That's awesome. And if this puppy sells a lot, let's say a few million pieces, most game com studios that have like competent amount of people and competent, competent uh, developer team, they'll have at least one or two person like, hey, can you play it in this and like, you know, fine tune it. Like they will at least make sure the minimum dips do not go. That's that's how you get a good experience. As, as long as you can make sure the dips never go below a certain point, let's say, uh, if you know the hardware is limiting, you're like, okay, focus on 30 FPS. If you're like, hey, the game is well optimized, the hardware is competent enough, you're like, okay, dip should not go below 60. So it can be done. And it's a laptop for light to mild workload, meaning for surprisingly large amount of humanity, it can do. It can just do. Like if, if you are happy with M1 uh, from Apple, you can do surprisingly lot amount of thing with this also, including video editing and all that. And it does have a lot of RAM, 16 GB, gigabytes of VRAM. Add a keyboard, add a mouse, a plug in a TV. It's a competent PC. It's not like compromised Linux. No, no, no. It's a full fledged laptop at that point in time. And uh, it also supports external GPU. Now this puppy is for rich people. This is not for poor people. This is for rich people. So do not complain about the price. It's specifically targeted for rich people who have niche. The niche is I enjoy gaming. I do gaming all the time. But when I travel, when I sit down, I want to enjoy my giant ass TV. They're like, okay, plug this puppy. And this was designed with, uh, again, I do not know who's responsible for it. Whether it's Nvidia or Asus, right? Does not come with the dock uh, with for normal desktop GPUs. It, it has dock which has mobile GPUs in it, but it does perform better because it's not thermally limited. So it's a kind of small thing, meaning you can carry that in a backpack. So if you're traveling somewhere, you go into a hotel, especially executive enough, of course you are buying that, you are rich enough. So you plonk your uh, basically controller down, plonk the external system, now you connect a monitor, now you go 4K 120 FPS. You can buy 1490 in there. So everything you can do, you can do even streaming with that if you have that. So no limitation, flat out balls to the wall gaming system if you really have the money for it. And it does have a lot of supported hardware and accessories. For example, this is a charger for it. Specifically, it has 65 watt power delivery. Um, and be mindful, this can also work with other devices. For example, Samsung S23 Ultra or something like that. Or anything that has like, you know, display port over USB. This has that. You connect this puppy to this. Now you connect the HDMI from the adapter to your TVs or monitor, whatever have you. And you do not have to worry about this like, hey, um, like, you know, every time I'm connecting HDMI, it's like, no, you just have one USB-C cable that will charge and uh, transfer the video file. You do not have to worry. It also has USB. So if you are want to connect, a, let's say a dongle that connects your uh, keyboard, mouse and all that, awesome. Or you can just put a USB 2.0 hub and do everything if you need to. So a lot of supported hardware is there on day one. Because again, it's a Windows PC. So surprisingly capable, competent things. Then we come to the final elephant in the room. How does it compare against Steam Deck? Well, flat out. Steam Deck, the biggest change is not the hardware. Let, me, let that be very clear. Nothing in the Steam Deck is like, whoa. Everything amazing about Steam Deck, it's its price. For example, this company also built a portable PC. And it's actual Windows PC. It has more horsepower than this puppy. It's just that price will also make you bleed. So <laughs> flat out. The biggest gamble here was Steam making a hardware that was like other people can also make, but they are like, hey, what if we make it cheap? They're like, whoa, what if we made it cheap? And that's how they changed everything. And because Steam was not going half measure, they were going balls to the wall, they have complete custom software stack here, meaning not only the operating system, the basically they have everything in control. Now, it benefit, it gives them more closer to what we call console experience, meaning it just works, quote unquote, just works, they can do it because why? They're controlling the whole pipeline, drivers to operating system, 
kernel, everything. They are controlling the wine layer, the proton DB layer, they are controlling everything, custom system. So that's super awesome. And they basically what they did is cram a PC into a console like ecosystem. They succeeded in that. However, they are still limited by the compatibility layer. You still, before you buy a game on Steam, you have to look, hey, do is this game properly uh, compatible with ProtonDB? Has somebody actually did it? Has somebody run a review on that? Only then you can truly buy a game here and be like, I'm sorted. If you do not do that, especially for new games, of course, if it's old, if it's popular, 99% chance it will work because again, Valve themselves would have worked on it. But other than that, you're still on the mercy of that system. You do not have the mercy system issue with Windows 11, but you have here. Because again, most things are still built for Windows 4. For example, you connect keyboard and mouse. Is this a good PC? Absolutely, you can do a lot of spreadsheet. You can do anything you can do online, you can do there. But the moment you have to like, hey, I want to install Lightroom. Yeah, that's an issue. You want to install this or that, yeah, that compatibility layer is a limiting factor. And they have made some serious progress. Let that be very clear. From day one, it was, whoa, what the hell is this? Now it's like, it's good, it's good. And I do expect them, like if they keep polishing it, because again, be mindful, they have control over the complete software stack and it's a custom SOC, meaning they are actually in bed with AMD and making some nice babies, as in drivers. Uh, so if they have complete control over the ecosystem and that's the primary reason why it has such a good uh, low power state. Uh, I can expect amazing things in Mark II. Basically, this was a good uh, getting off point. And be mindful, if your starting off point is sells you more than 1 million unit, you good. You good. Like you, you got this. Like you, you're not gonna, you know, starve to death. You good. You good. So I do expect amazing things in Mark II, but uh, flat out that's the biggest limitation here. Like it's a tangibly good system. I'm not talking about performance because again, it's not that big of a deal, but it is tangibly, uh, you know, limited by that compatibility. Level. Meaning it's just not like buy and enjoy the game. It's not there yet. It will take some time, but uh, it will still take some time. So right now, that's the biggest difference. Do you want just a mindless experience of like Windows 11 system? Enjoy Asus ROG. If you want a bit more uh, elbow grease and you know which games you're gonna play, you have checked it that they work perfectly flawlessly in this, you can buy that. Asus is a bit more uh, PC that looks like a gaming console. Basically this, but cheaper. So this was my presentation on basically Asus ROG Ally. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it in that case. Please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.